ya estoy muerto. Eso lo sabemos los dos. Esto no lo voy a contar. Pero ¿sabes qué? Tú tampoco. Hello fellow YouTubers, welcome to another episode of Armchair Journalism, where I talk about issues discussed in the news media with credible cited sources and with no influence from sponsors. The CIA, drug trafficking, cartels, contras, words that make up a really dope hook for a mumble rap song, or am I starting this video by introducing a weird word association game that would make you believe I need a tinfoil hat? Neither, thankfully. In today's episode, we are going to cover the tragic murder of Enrique Kiki Camarena and the controversial history surrounding it. And with the last snark being canceled, I thought maybe you guys deserved some answers. For those unfamiliar with the circumstances surrounding Camarena's death, here's a quick summary. On February 7th, 1985, Camarena was kidnapped by Jalisco State Police in Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, while he was walking from his office at the US consulate to meet his wife for lunch. Camarena was taken to 881 Lope de Vega in the Colonia of Jardines de Bosque, a residence owned by Rafael Caro Quintero, by his captors, where he was tortured and killed alongside Alfredo Zavala Avelar, who was a pilot for the Mexican Agriculture Department and one of Camarena's informants. Quintero allegedly ordered the abduction and execution of Camarena and Avelar alongside other cartel members. The murders were allegedly retaliation for the 1984 raid on a 540 hectare marijuana plantation named Buffalo Ranch in the northern Mexican state of Chihuahua. The DEA seized 10,000 tons of marijuana, which was estimated to be worth about 2.5 billion US dollars. Autopsy reports show that Camarena's skull and jaw were broken in several places. In the recording of Camarena's beating, he can be heard stating, could I ask you? to have my ribs bandaged, please, which indicated that his ribs were damaged during his interrogation. Towards the end of the interrogation, Dr. Humberto Alvarez Machain allegedly injected Camarena with lidocaine, an anesthetic to relieve some of the pain, although he may have been given epinephrine as well. Later testimony showed that both high-ranking Mexican politicians and law enforcement officials were present during the interrogations, but that has yet to be proven. Once both Avelar and Camarena were killed, they were buried in Guadalajara, then reburied in a rural area in Michoacán. Their bodies were found at the El Moreno Ranch in Vista Hermosa in the state of Michoacán. Camarena's body was identified through his fingerprints, while Avelar's body was identified through his dental records. Operation Leyenda began soon after finding the bodies. The DEA put together a task force that eventually garnered 14 convictions in the US District Court of the Central District of California. In 1989, a Guadalajara court sentenced Caro Quintero and Ernesto Ponseca Carillo to 40 years in prison. In 2013, Caro Quintero was released on a technicality by a Mexican court. The Mexican court did eventually reverse the decision, but Caro Quintero disappeared by the time that happened and is currently a wanted fugitive. Fonseca is currently on house arrest due to his health issues. There were a few people that were allegedly involved in this case that I want to talk about. The first is Juan Mata Ballesteros, who was a major Honduran drug trafficker and the person that served as the link between the Guadalajara cartel and the Medellin cartel. He also helped move weapons south to the Honduran-Nicaraguan border to help the US aid the Contras while smuggling drugs north into Mexico which would eventually arrive in the US. He did this through his airline Seco. On May 8, 1991, Mata Ballesteros was sentenced in federal court to three life sentences for his involvement in the kidnapping of US drug enforcement agent Enrique Camarena. As some of you may know, the CIA helped the Contras take down the Sandinista government. According to the Kerry report, named after then Senator John Kerry, beginning in 1984, Seco was the principal company used by the Contras in Honduras to transport supplies and personnel for the FDN, or the Fuerza Democrática Nicaragüense, a Contra faction, carrying at least a million rounds of ammunition, food, uniforms, and other military supplies for the Contras from 1983 through 1985. 
And in case any of you are wondering, yes, Felix Gallardo did support the Nicaraguan Contras, according to his former pilot, Werner Lotz. However, Seco isn't the only connection the CIA has to drug traffickers. The CIA also had a working relationship with the DFS, or Dirección Federal de Seguridad. To give you an idea of how corrupt the DFS was, Ernesto Fonseca had DFS agents working as his chauffeurs and bodyguards. And to give you an idea on how the CIA backed the DFS, we can turn our attention to Miguel Nazar Haro, the DFS director from 1977 to 1982, who the CIA called an essential contact for the CIA station in Mexico City. In 1982, Haro was arrested in San Diego on charges of participating in a multi-million dollar car theft ring. The CIA intervened and Haro ultimately faced no consequences for his actions. And according to Francis Mullen, a former administrator of the DEA, the DFS protected Caro Quintero, and it was because of that protection that he was able to flee following the abduction of Camarena. Did the US know the Contras were involved in trafficking drugs? Do I ask rhetorical questions? Yes. Oliver North, former head of the National Security Council in 1981, met with then dictator and drug trafficker Manuel Noriega in September 1986. They met to discuss plans to collaborate to support the Contras in exchange for American money and arms. It has been documented that North was also informed that a Contra plane was being used to smuggle drugs. North later falsely claimed that he informed the DEA after he was informed. The CIA also knew that the Contras were trafficking drugs, but did nothing about it. Additionally, the Kerry report found that drug traffickers aided the Contras by providing weapons, money, and equipment in exchange for their help in moving cocaine into the US. So did the CIA have any involvement in Camarena's murder? Well, according to Hector Bereyes, who was the DEA supervisor of the Camarena case, an ex-DEA agent who headed the El Paso Intelligence Center, Phil Jordan, and a former CIA contract pilot who worked for SECO, Robert Plumley. The CIA was involved in Camarena's execution. Specifically, they believe Camarena discovered that his own government collaborated with Caro Quintero and used illicit drug profits to help fund the Contras. Additionally, they believe that Felix Ismael Rodriguez was the murderer. Perez specifically claims the DFS agents were the people responsible for kidnapping Camarena. There wasn't much I could find as far as credible documentation is concerned. There was also a timeline inconsistency. The narrative claims that Felix Rodriguez transported Mata Ballesteros to Mexico and introduced him to the Guadalajara cartel. Felix's intent was to set up a connection to move cocaine into the US to fund the Contras. However, according to the report by Lawrence Walsh, who was the independent counsel for investigating the Iran Contra scandal, Rodriguez was not a clandestine coordinator to help the Contras until 1985. Mata Ballesteros was already in Mexico and working for the Guadalajara cartel by the time Felix was assigned. Jorge Godoy, one of Bayerez's witnesses and former GC bodyguard, claims to have been in Guadalajara in 1984, where he spotted Rodriguez and a few other politicians. Another witness and bodyguard of Fonseca was Rene Lopez Romero. He stated he saw Rodriguez interrogating Camarena. Lawrence Harrison, who worked for the GC between 1983 and 1984, claimed that the CIA killed Camarena. During the retrial of Ruben Zuno Arce, Godoy and Romero both testified. Godoy claimed to be a rug cleaner and not a bodyguard, and stated that Zuno and former Secretary of the Interior for Mexico, Manuel Bartlett, attended several meetings with drug traffickers, the defense minister, an army general, and others. According to Godoy, the first meeting took place at the Las Americas Hotel in Guadalajara in 1984. At this meeting, Zuno suggested that they should kidnap and kill Camarena. Lopez testified that he saw Alvarez washing out syringes and amongst the drug lords meeting at Lope de Vega alongside others, including Bartlett. However, the Times investigation showed that Godoy's description of the Las Americas Hotel did not match what it actually looked like in person. Furthermore, Mexican officials confirmed that Barlett was attending a meeting in Mexico City during Camarena's torture. Harrison did not implicate Zuno or Alvarez in the kidnapping or murder of Camarena. On July 6, 1990, Harrison testified that he had no direct knowledge that the CIA was involved with drug traffickers. 
I know that this is a lot of information and it's probably enough information to make your head explode. Trust me, as someone whose head has exploded on more than one occasion, I can say that the circumstances surrounding this case has more pieces involved and is more complicated than playing three-dimensional chess at zero gravity while wearing a blindfold. Those in the field of criminal justice were not the only ones to suspect that the GC had connections to the Contras. In fact, as the case of the United States of America versus Jesus Felix Gutierrez was being carried out, the defense team requested information regarding the relationship between Felix Gallardo and Werner Lotz, the US Contra connection, the suppressed Camarena recording, and information regarding Werner Lotz as an informant. As a response, the plaintiffs, the United States, responded to the defense team of Felix Gutierrez by saying that Caro Quintero was responsible for ordering the execution of Camarena, that there wasn't enough evidence to prosecute Felix Gallardo, and that they were aware that Felix Gallardo donated money to the Contras. For those who don't know, Jesus Felix Gutierrez was the person who helped Caro Quintero escape following the kidnapping and murder of Camarena. It seems like the CIA, at least from my perspective, backed the wrong groups of people due to its focus on fighting communism but I don't think they played any direct role in the murder of Camarena. Concerning other forensic evidence in the case, a mitochondrial DNA analysis was performed. Standards were taken from Juan Mata Lopez and Rene Verdugo and were compared to hairs found at the crime scene. The results showed that Juan Mata Lopez could be excluded as the person whose hair was at the crime scene, and the results for Rene Verdugo came back as inconclusive. So who killed Enrique Kiki Camarena? As of right now, no one can say definitively. However, I believe that Caro Quintero gave the order. But as far as who physically carried out Camarena's interrogation, torture, and execution, it was likely the former federal comandante, Sergio Espino Verdin. In the interrogation tapes, Caro Quintero and Espino Verdin were identified according to prosecutors of the Los Angeles Federal Court. Additionally, Alvarez's fingerprints were found at 881 Lope de Vega, which places him at the same residence where Camarena was killed. Alvarez's confession to the DEA also places him at 881 Lope de Vega during the time Camarena was there, which suggests the events might have gone down in the way that Narcos portrayed them. In conclusion, we may never know what exactly transpired, and the case may remain shrouded in mystery until more relevant documents are made available or until the last snark is released. Thanks for watching Armchair Journalism. If you like this content and you would like to see more, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified whenever I upload.